Good evening, everyone. It's Thursday, December 8th, 2016. I'm Kayla Coughlin. And I'm Alexandra Garcia. Welcome to The Local Live. The village of Mamaroneck swore in their newly elected trustees. And the Mamaroneck Public Library elected new members to their board. The Community Resource Center celebrates their annual gala. LNCCV premieres its first Spanish language Lego soap opera. The village of Mamaroneck kicked off the holiday season with its tree lighting social. The worldwide Hour of Code event is here in Mamaroneck. Shop, Cook, Eat New York is the holiday book for New York foodies. The Mamaroneck Tigers are the play of the week. Con Ed warns Westchester customers not to fall for a new scam. This and more local stories in our segment, In the Media. And on tonight's roundtable, we'll chat local holiday shopping with the leaders of the Larchmont and Mamaroneck Chambers of Commerce. The Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees held their reorganizational meeting on Monday, December 5th. At this meeting, the newly elected trustees Victor Tafour, Keith Waite, and incumbent Leon Potok were sworn in. Judge Gallagher, Gallagher was also sworn in for a third term. The trustees took the opportunity to make acceptance speeches and thank all who supported them. The appointments for seven positions on the board were also announced at the, at the meeting. If you would like to learn more about the updated board, go to lmctv.org where you can watch a recording of the entire meeting. To continue doing my best to make this the best community it can be for our residents. As a member of the board, I intend to work with board members, with volunteers, with staff to do the best job we can and to do it cooperatively and civilly as best we can. We will have disagreements from time to time. That's the history of this village. That's the village of human relationships. We don't always agree about everything, but I hope that we will do so in a civil manner with dialogue, with conversation, with exchange of ideas, and ultimately um, let the majority d determine where we go and determine based on what's best for our residents. Thank you. As, as trustee and having had your vote, I feel that I will have to honor that trust that you have given me, and I'll do that to the best of my ability. So just one thing I do want to say, and I've written it down, is... <laughs> Uh, something that you all recognize, but I had to write it down, I was able to get. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and for all of, all who participated in, in the electoral process, because this is a wonderful democracy, and uh, just one short story, I was stood that, in that podium about five years ago, not knowing really anybody in this village, I read the comprehensive plan, and I came to suggest a few ideas to, to the mayor and vice uh, and deputy may mayor. Um, I, I suggested they would do a generic EIS for the comprehensive plan. I was dismissed. No hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> five years later, I get a chance to sit here. Who would have imagined that? And actually, uh, the comprehensive plan calls for a five-year status report. So one of my first <laughs> action next week is going to be to ask for that. A special election was held at the Mamaroneck Public Library on December 7th. Members of the community came out to vote for the library's new budget and to elect four new trustees. A budget totaling just under $3 million was approved, with 88% of voters voting in approval. The new trustees for the library are Robert Sid Albert, Joanne Shaw, Martha Martha Sokol McCarty and Katie Lanigan. These trustees will serve a three-year term, which will begin on June 1, 2017. Earlier today, Sedona Tap House presented a check of over $600 to the Community Resource Center as part of their program, Stake Out for Charity, on Monday nights. I'm Jablonski, and I want to thank the Community Resource Center for coming and being one of our charities for our Stake Out for Charity night. Um, we were able to raise $607 for the local charity which is a, a great deal for us. It's a way for us to give back to the community. I want to thank you. Great. Uh, I would note it's very apropos in this holiday season that what we present here is the best of America. This We have business, community organizations helping each other. And there's nothing better than a friendly village. So I just congratulate everybody. 
My name is John Ferris. I'm a board member of CRC, and I'd like to thank Sedona Restaurant. I'd like to thank Bill and Ron for um, having us part of their charity nights. And I'd like to thank the ladies here to my left who did so much to make our organization what it is today. Sedona donates $1 for every steak sold on Monday nights. The next charity who will benefit from this program will be the Harbor Island Conservancy through the month of December. And speaking of the Community Resource Center, they celebrated their annual gala last Thursday where they honored Jane Orens, Eric Katz, and Max Properties with the Amigo Award for their unconditional support and volunteer work. The gala was dedicated to the Dreamers, who shared their personal struggles as well as their successes, thanks to DACA, the executive order passed by President Obama. The executive order provides temporary protection from deportation, as well as a social security number and work permission to undocumented youth. Gail Vidalas and Durante Martinez, the co-executive directors from the Community Resource Center, expressed their gratitude to the community for their support. And today I want to give out a special thanks to all our donors, all the community members that came to support our gala last Thursday. Thank you so much. We had over 200 guests. And thank you again for making such a wonderful night a huge success. Thank you. And I just want to say that as a, a resident of the Mamarinic community, it is so beautiful to be a part of such a warm and giving community. Thank you all for coming to support us and our mission to empower and advocate for our immigrant community. Uh, we have had a very successful annual gala, and it's all because of you. Amor Hecho Pedazos, LMC TV's first scripted telenovela, is premiering after a year and a half in the making and 100 hours of stop motion animation. The telenovela, or soap opera, is produced in Spanish with English subtitles and has everything from drama to passion to evil twins. It's been a labor of love for LMC TV producer and writer Dina Schumacher, whose goal was to provide more Spanish language content for the community. The first episode will air this Friday, December 9th at 9.15 p.m. after The Rascal. Here's a sneak peek of season one of Amor Hecho Pedazos. Roll it. Amor Hecho Pedazos. No podemos seguir con esta tortura. Oh, Lucia, no puedo vivir sin escuchar tu voz. Lucia, ¿te quieres casar conmigo? ¿Quién es él? Pablo, mi hermano gemelo, está finalmente fuera de nuestras vidas. Ricardo, Pablo nunca me ha besado así. Eso sí sabes. Si tú fuiste nuestra maestra. El amor es más que esos pensamientos pecaísimos que te pasan por la cabeza. Regresé por ti. Marco. Está inconsciente. Ella mintió. Seguro está con él. ¿Qué habrá hecho ese hombre para mecer tanto amor? Siempre estás a su lado. Si yo lo ayudo, ¿me amarías tanto como a él? Coma o sin coma, yo igual lo amo y no puedo, no puedo dejarlo. Tú nos tienes que ayudar. No por mí, pero porque una mujer siempre sabe. Here's Jack Wells with What's Trending in the Media. This past week, a fire broke out at 679 Mamaroneck Avenue. Three families were displaced from the three-story building, which is home to Master Cuts. For more information on the fire, be sure to check out LoHUD. Also this past week, Westchester County Legislator Catherine Parker has asked the county's Human Rights Commissioner to look into what she says is an increase in hate crimes in the county since the recent election. In her letter, she goes on to list the hate crimes around Westchester. To learn more about Parker's request, check out The Loop. Michael Douglas, along with Genesis Prize Foundation and the Jewish Funders Network, have recently secured a grant for Connect, which is a new initiative that seeks to welcome interfaith families in Westchester. Douglas said, Engaging interfaith families is essential to creating a thriving Jewish community, and I'm honored to help launch the new initiative. To learn more about the program and the upcoming holiday events, visit the Maranek Daily Voice. At 4 o'clock this Sunday at the Largemont Public Library, join Jennifer Armstrong, author of Seinfeldia, where she will discuss the popular sitcom Seinfeld and also tell the stories of comedians Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. For all the information about the event, check out the Maranek Hamlet Hub. Clinton Kelly 
Star of ABC's The Chew will now match donations to pet rescue for up to $15,000. He adopted his dog from the organization in 2009 and is a big supporter of pet rescue. It is amazing how much Kelly has done for pet rescue, volunteer Caroline Walker told the Daily Voice. Con Ed is warning customers about a new scam. Scanners have been calling Westchester residents, threatening to shut off gas and power if they do not pay their bills. Be alert if asked to pay bills by prepaid debit card or to send money to an out-of-state address. To check out the complete article, visit the Maranek Daily Voice. And that's it for this week's In the Media. I'm Jack Wells. Now it's time for some local trivia, then on tonight's roundtable, we'll chat local holiday shopping with the leaders of the Larchmont and the Maranek Chambers of Commerce. Stay tuned. Tis the season to go shopping, whether gift buying or self-indulging. Tonight's guests will tell you how, where, and why to keep it local. As always, you can join our conversation, call, email, or tweet. The contact information is on your screen. I'm Maura Carlin. I'm solo tonight, but I am joined by Steve Josephson, president of the Mamaronek Chamber of Commerce, and he's also the owner of the Toy Box and Sean Nagpal, who's the president of the Larchmont Chamber of Commerce and the owner of Larchmont's Coriander Restaurant. Thank you for being here, appreciate it. Um, so we filled ourselves on Thanksgiving, we ran about on Black Friday, we spent on Small Business Saturday, and surfed and scrolled on Cyber Monday. What should we be doing now to support the businesses in the community? Shopping local. I think shopping local and uh, supporting Mamaronak and Larchmont um, is uh, a meaningful thing. It keeps people in business. Um, it keeps people's jobs. It keeps stores not vac not empty, but fully loaded. Hopefully, no empty stores. And I think it's uh, the right thing to do is to shop local and uh, eat local. Yeah, I agree 100%. That's that's really what we should be after at this point. We should be, uh, you know, patronizing all our local retailers, the restaurants, throw your holiday parties there. Everyone's ready and willing, and we're all really excited to support our communities and receive the support back. It's really important. One resident I, I heard commented that they couldn't buy everything they needed here, which is probably true, but is there a percent or amount of sales that we should try to spend locally well I mean there's always you know different type of businesses in Larchmont and Mamaronak and we have a lot of unique different types of stores both communities and um, I mean I'm not saying that people don't shouldn't shop online because the percentage is getting bigger and bigger every year as it's growing but uh, again they should keep it local and um, business can keep on thriving and not have empty stores yeah, I think one thing that works really well is um, actually our previous president of the chamber, Carolyn, she actually pledged this year to spend at least 80% of what she would be spending on her holiday shopping locally in Largemont, in Mamaroneck. So I think with that mindset, whether or not you can get everything, which we all know, as you'd mentioned, um, you know, a lot of things are available online and, you know, sometimes it may be easier. But if you pledge mentally to say, oh, I'm going to spend so much, uh, you know, X amount in our, lo in our locality, you will find a way to find what you want. So I think going in with that mentality too is a big help, and I'm sure you'd agree with that, Steve. Yes. There has have been movements here to shop locally. Um, have you seen it making a difference? You know, that people really are trying to. I think so. I think, uh, especially uh, from the from the perspective of Largemont, what we did is we launched a social media campaign uh, called Largemont Jingle Shop and Mingle. And uh, if you hashtag that in any of your pictures, you take a selfie in one of the stores you're shopping at, we actually enter you automatically into a $1,000 shopping spree contest. So it's actually kind of spurred on people to shop locally, and it's also engaged people on social media, and it's engaged the local businesses. Uh, we've put posters up in the windows. So I think that we're definitely seeing a, uh, a benefit, and we're seeing some success in that. So yeah, I would say so, for sure. Any chance I won? 
<laughs> you never know. You never know. How important is the holiday season to our local businesses? I think the holiday season um, is very important. It uh, brings people out. It uh, has an environment of some kind of gathering, whether it's restaurants. Um, they have entertainment. We have a lot of uh, different things in the Maranac. We have the Emline Theater. Uh, we have a lot of different shops that they could shop in. And um, we've been, the Maranac has been very successful over the past five, six, seven years, and it seems to be growing. Our community seems to be growing both in the Maranac and Larchmont. You know, traditionally, the, in fact, where Black Friday came from was that's when big stores started to turn a profit. Is it the same for small businesses here? Well, it's a funny thing is, you know, we talk about Black Friday and Black Friday or that weekend for me, and I would say a lot of other retailers, is probably one of the softest weekends because everybody is out there in the big malls and the big box stores. And usually that Saturday, we don't get busy till 3, 4 o'clock because everybody is out shopping in the malls. They're in big box stores. And then when they kind of get tired, they come to the local stores, whether it's Mamaronac or Larchmont. But it, it, the... the Weekend of Black Friday is usually a slow weekend, but we see in the past I've started four four years ago um, I started a 30% off sale and I kind of kick it off the Sunday Before Thanksgiving okay. when it's the same Sunday that we have the turkey trot in the Maranac So I kind of like coordinate that and then for two weeks I have a 30% sale off in my store off everything so you know I now generate the Black Friday weekend a little bit more than what it used to be because now people have a reason to come. So it's the Black Friday two weeks. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Does it make a difference mm -hmm. that uh, this year Christmas and Hanukkah are the same time? So it's the first year that I could say I have a sign up in my store that says how many shopping days left till Christmas and till Hanukkah. This is the first year both numbers are exactly the same. And does it make a difference for shopping patterns or party patterns? Um, I think I think it uh, it definitely does. It starts to bunch things up quite a bit. So it's a positive in that a lot of people are around and everyone's looking to do something, to buy something, to to spend spend their money and spend their time locally. So I would definitely say it's a positive. You can't there's there's no negative involved. It's a great thing. It brings everyone together, especially you know different cultural backgrounds for Christmas, for Hanukkah, and it really adds to the festive feeling of the whole the whole season. So it's a great thing in my opinion. So we should try to have this happen more. Yeah, we should we should figure this out. <laughs> I, yeah, I, would, I would love to see Hanukkah and Christmas always December 24th to December 25th. That would be very, very easy then. So I'm going to give you the chance to tell us about some of the, some of your finds or ideas for holiday gifts. And I'm going to start with you because you actually do have a store. What do you think's the coolest, uh, you know, some cool ideas besides that there's some little computer toy that no one well, can find. Well, I mean, of course, there's the item that's called the Hatchimals. That's it. Okay, <laughs> which is... What's that? In, <laughs> it, it's an egg, uh -huh. and it hatches, and it pops out of the egg. And then from there, it's like a little electronic uh, You stock Furby. this in your store? Well, I stock it, but I just can't get it now until January. Ah. And neither can <laughs> anyone else, unfortunately. But, you know, there's Furbies out there that I have that's back in stock, and it's doing very, very well. But, you know, there's a lot of other items in my store that have been selling for years, which is Lego, and then there's basic games and Play-Doh and dolls, and there's so many, you know, categories that I have that people come in and they shop local and they shop in my store, you know, and then there's other stores, you know, like Miller's, and he carries a full line of bikes and outdoor furniture and uh, clothing for children, but we have a lot of different stores, you know, there's Robert's, uh, that sells both children's clothing and men's clothing. Uh, there's a, uh, on, on Boston Post Road, there's Chocolations. But we have a large variety of different types of um, both restaurants and retail outlets that can keep the people in our area. Now, we, uh, you have a website for the Mamaroneck Chamber of Commerce. Correct. Um, does it have a listing? It has a listing of your members. Does it have a listing of all the stores in Mamaroneck? I believe it has. I know for sure it has a listing of all our members. 
I believe we just put up a new website, so I think there are some, but I'm not 100% sure. But the interesting thing, and, and Larchmont has this also, there's more than just one shopping area in the village of Amaranek, mm -hmm. and maybe you can remind everyone all the different yeah, nooks on, and crannies. You know, we have a very unique situation. I mean, everybody judges Mamaronek Avenue as our village to shop, but we have a wide variety along Boston Post Road, you know, going into Rye Neck and then coming back, you know, going towards Larchmont, and then Larchmont picks up on another row of stores. Right, and so we're going to turn to Larchmont, which also has multiple shopping areas. Yeah, and I would say that uh, similarly to Mamaronek, Larchmont has a really unique uh, retail sector. And why, uh, the reason I say that is because we have so many personalized stores that really reach out to the community and really uh, provide what a lot of people look for. So as you're mentioning, there's so many interesting things to buy this year. I, off the top of my head, there's four or five stores. That right away, you have things like Clutch, beautiful handbags, uh, personalized items. You have Pink on Palmer. You've got Mancino's, which is an awesome tailor that I personally use myself. Um, you know, you've got uh, Jane Goodrich Photography, if you want to set up uh, photography for your, for your kids, for your family. There's so many different directions you can go in, and especially because Largemont Mamaronek, although Largemont Small Mamaronek is, is larger, they function like small communities. Everyone knows each other, everyone wants to support each other, and everyone will support each other. So, you know, it's, it's really great to see that, and there's so many great options available that there really is no reason for anyone to look any further than these two great towns. Now, we, I will mention that Larchmont also has, uh, Larchmont's Chamber of Commerce <coughs> also has a website yes. that lists your members. Yes. And Larchmont Dish actually did a little shopping guide, and we'll mm -hmm. post the link to it, um, sort of shopping ideas yeah. uh, for people in Larchmont. We have a question, and uh, would your two chambers ever consider having a website, having on your website a list of deals happening in your respective vi villages, or at least, or even combining your two? Well, actually, interestingly enough, we've been throwing around the idea of actually turning our website into an e-commerce website so that we could list all of our members and even just uh, general stores or, or retailers in, in Largemont and have them offer deals and specials and sales or just their regular inventory so that uh, you know our shoppers can see what we have right there on, on, the, uh, on their mobile or on their uh, desktops. So definitely. As far as combining the two chambers, I don't know if that's 100% possible, but I remember years ago, well, I've been coordinating, involved. Coordinating, maybe not, not combining. Correct. I, no. I remember years ago, um, we tried to do certain things together, and unfortunately, uh, they didn't want to do it. But now that there's You've new blood. You've got me now, don't worry. No, now, that <laughs> right, now that there's new blood, young blood, I should say, right. and believe it or not, the new president that's going to take over Susan, also young blood. On you're you're leaving your post? I'm leaving my post, yes. But I'm still in the background. And <laughs> okay. I was, I'm breaking I'm news on the local right, live. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I really think that, the, you know, we have a lot of things in common and we should work together because we are really one unique, you know, community, okay. both Larchmont and Mamaronek being so close to each other. We do overlap. And I know that sometimes if they can't find something local in Mamaronek, I won't send them elsewhere, I send them, if I know that Larchmont has it, I send them to Larchmont. My theory is, is that you should keep everything local, including the money, including the shopping, including the eating. Now, before I move on, because we have another question, <coughs> who will be your successor? Maybe that's breaking news. <laughs> Susan Fuller, she's now with the Bank of Orange, Orange Bank, that's on, on Boston Post Road. It's a new bank, and okay. she will be okay. the new president. Okay, we do have another question. Um, which is, and I'm not sure I agree with the question, <laughs> uh, why does it seem like more businesses in Larchmont are closing in comparison to Mamaronek, which seems to have more new stores? Um, I will point out there have been a couple of new stores in Larchmont. You did just lose two stores we to did. a fire. Yes. Um, it seemed like, uh, so I'm going to reword the question. It seemed like things were starting to pick up. Is that correct? In my opinion, I think that as every business is, it's cyclical. I think that uh, you have stores come in, you have stores go out. Uh, unfortunately for Largemont, uh, it's very visible when a store goes out because we only have really two or three major sh shopping streets. So when a large store that holds a large space goes out, it's very visible, which is kind of why it's more out there and it may seem like Largemont is losing more stores or, or doesn't have the, um, the traffic that you know other towns may have. But 
I have also seen a, uh, a huge resurgence in, in energy and excitement in Largemont. There are so many new restaurants that have come in. I mean, Largemont's become almost a restaurant destination, just like, just yeah, like no. Mamaroneck is. Um, in terms of the local shopping, we just got a Jay McLaughlin in, and they told us, uh, myself personally, um, that they're doing fantastic, and they're so happy to be in town. So I, in my opinion, yeah, stores have gone out, but it's, it's part of business. It's, it's the way it works. It's cyclical, and stores will come in and refill, and as long as we do our part, like we're talking about, like Steve and I are saying, then stores will stay, and uh, it, it's just a community effort. It starts from the landlords and goes all the way to our communities and our residents. And as long as everyone's on the same page, we're going to do great. But we do have a question about you do have two of your largest stores still vacant, and they've been yep. vacant a long time. Is yep. anything happening there? As far as I know, there's a lot of interest and a lot of good interest, a lot of interesting people coming across saying that they want to do something. And if those people do come in and solidify anything, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm not at liberty to say who they are just yet, but, <laughs> okay. but I can say that good things are happening, absolutely. And there are ways to buy local gifts even for uh, businesses that are not retail stores, gift cards? Absolutely. Uh, the restaurants, for example, my own restaurant, Coriander, we, do, uh, we run a, a kind of, not I wouldn't call it a Black Friday sale, but a holiday special where if you buy a $50 gift card or more, we'll actually increase the value of the gift card. So 50 or more, and you'll get another five, 100 more, you'll get another 20. So, so rest, most restaurants will give gift cards and sell gift cards as yes. the stores will as well. Correct, yeah. And beauty services. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm sure, I, I, I'm, as, as an example, someone, you can buy a gift card at, uh, at um, one, of our, one of our local stores, actually many of them, and they'll throw something in, you know, so okay. you may get a free makeover. You may get some additional money on the gift card. A lot of different interesting things you can do. I will also point, I'm just going to point this out. We actually, there are actually two bookstores in Larchmont. I mean, people complain there are no bookstores anymore. Yeah, there are. And there are two yeah, great in ones. Larchmont. So, yeah. um, well, we want to thank you for joining us a and pleasure. encouraging everyone to actually shop local. And we hope you guys have a successful and happy and healthy holiday season. Thanks for thank having you. us. You too. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back in a moment with more community stories and, of course, the answer to the trivia question. Now to local sports, after raising their first ever state championship banner, the Mamaroneck ice hockey team battled into overtime against Rye. Senior Jack Dente went top shelf on a wraparound shot to send Tiger fans home happy in the LMC Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Dente with Tori in the corner. Dente comes around, try for a wraparound. The village of Amarana kicked off the holiday season with the 11th annual tree lighting social. I was there and sh shared in on all the fun. Hi everyone, we're here in the 11th annual tree lighting taking place in Harbor Island in Mamaroneck. Right now we're hanging out with Santa and Mrs. Claus and tons of family in the Christmas spirit and sipping on some hot chocolate. So let's see what everybody has to say and let's see what everybody wants for Christmas. At the beginning of the tree lighting social, Santa and Mrs. Claus arrived in style. And of course, he greeted fans while riding in a Ferrari. I'm Jack Saracino and this is Michael Tanny. Hello. And Hi. we're the chauffeurs that brought, Michael brought Santa and I brought Mrs. Claus down. Okay, so Michael, say a couple of words to you. It was a lot of fun. We brought him down in a Ferrari, so he was driving in style. Was that the highlight of your evening? I enjoyed it a lot, yeah. yeah it was did. terrific. 
Roasting tasty mini hot dogs over the bonfires were many families' favorites, and while others roasted, I waited online for my favorite part of the evening, which was getting some warm hot chocolate during the cold evening to warm me up. The highlight from my viewpoint is that this is a family event. It's great to see the parents, you know, all ages, uh, and it's just it's a great thing, you never, you never grow. So is this your first year at attending the annual tree lighting? Yes, it is. My first year here at uh, Mamaronic. It's lovely. They always have wonderful events here and uh, decided to come out tonight. Get some hot dogs, get some uh, marshmallows roasting, and Santa Claus. Did you guys see Santa Claus already? No. Not yet. We're, we're planning to. Not yet? Okay. Do you guys know what you want for Christmas? What are you planning to tell Santa? I want everyone to be happy. Yes, happy? Love you. I want a new shoe. Families gathered around the tree and counted down to the very moment we were all waiting for. This is actually the village's 11th annual uh, tree lighting social, sponsored by the Tri Club. This really the success for this tree lighting is all the volunteers. You know, they have the hot chocolate down to a science. They have the hot dog roasting and the Santa photos. We really cannot do this event without everybody who's volunteering. There you have it, everyone. This was the 11th annual tree lighting taking place at the Pavilion, located in Harbor Island in Mamaroneck. And we're just having a fabulous time, as you can see. Everybody's gathering in the Christmas spirit here at the Pavilion right after the tree lighting. And the tree is beautiful. Everybody's sipping on hot chocolate. And we truly are having a fantastic time. We'll see you guys next year. Same place, same time. I'm Alexandra Garcia reporting for The Local Live. And from The Local Live studios, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Shop, Cook, Eat New York is the perfect holiday book for all you New York foodies. Melissa Moak has the story. The Gourmet Garage in Soho has lots of great things to eat. Let's see what's on their menu for tonight. There's soup, there's chowder, there's chili. Oh look, there's a book signing. Shop, Cook, Eat by Susan Mizell and Natalie Sen. Let's check it out. If you're looking for something special for the holidays, this book might have just what you're looking for. I spoke with the authors to find out more about what's inside. What can you tell me about the book? Uh, this is a book about New York huh? and about the five boroughs. And Susan and myself, we went everywhere and we are always looking for new food and good food. And we also like to talk about the people who are making food. We drove all around to the different okay. boroughs. And we actually tried to put things in the book that were like still mom and pop stores. Some very unusual places like there's a Philippine grocery store that has some very weird stuff in it, but it was in a neighborhood where Filipino shops. We did a, a bunch of Korean stores. We did. We try to do a lot of ethnic stores. In fact, we're going to do a new book called The Flavor yeah, of the Five yeah. yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. I got my autographed copy, and you can pick up a copy at Anderson's Bookstore in Larchmont, or you can order it online. For The Local Live, I'm Melissa Moak. The annual Hour of Code campaign kicked off worldwide this week with many events happening in our area. Reporter Maral Kathari has all the details from the STEM Alliance's Community for Code event. Coding is needed in almost every profession today. Technology is getting more and more advanced, but unfortunately, a lot of schools around our district don't offer coding classes. But Marinick is making sure that is not a problem in our community. Microsoft Hour of Code has come right here to Hamix Middle School to offer lessons to students and teachers in our community about robotics and coding. The Hamix Middle School hosted an event on Monday, December 5th to celebrate Computer Science Education Week to support the importance of coding. The Mamaroneck School District has an award-winning STEM Alliance program, so community educators wanted to host an Hour of Code to invite parents and students around the community to join in on the fun as they worked in two separate rooms to develop physical computing and online coding. We are a local nonprofit, a grassroots-based organization who care about science, technology, engineering, and math, and we advocate for those programs for children here in our community. This is Computer Science Education Week, and it's a week to really demystify 
coding and computer science because ultimately um, code really is the rails that our life runs on these days. Technology teachers and employees of Microsoft sat with students and parents to build games and robots through coding. I love that it gives you a lot of freedom. For example, when you're on a computer, you don't always have to use the programs the way they're intended if you know code. I love helping other people learn to code and I want everyone to learn how to code. Well, actually, my fifth grader is a, is a volunteer. He's helping Mr. Smith um, teach the coding and my younger ones, my first and third grader, wanted to see what it was all about. Mr. Smith was also there to overlook the lessons and he shared why it's important for everyone to learn coding. I think it's important that we introduce students to some of the concepts of computer science like computational thinking and decomposing large problems and being persistent and never giving up. Anna has definitely taught me a lot about coding. Hopefully my equation works out. Reporting for LMC TV, I'm Raul Kathwari. missed it. There is still time to donate to LMC TV. Luis is an adorable pit mix at about seven or eight months old. She is very sweet and friendly with humans and is learning to play with dogs. She is also friendly with cats. She was found in Harlem by the fire department tied up on a pole. For more information on how to adopt Louise or browse other adorable pets, go to www.ny-petrescue.org. Remember, if you'd like to keep us on the air, support our program by checking out our website at www.lmctv.org and click the donate button in the upper right corner. We really appreciate any contribution. We are always welcoming new interns and volunteers, so send your emails to the local live at lmctv.org and join us. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Coglin, And I'm Alexandra Garcia. See you next week for another episode of The Local Live.